How are you guys feeling right now? <laughs> How many people feel a little scared? How many people who feel scared think that, think that feels kind of good? Yeah, all right. We have some believers already in the crowd. So right here, right now, in this room, we're going to declare an end to a conventional understanding of safety. It's underrated, it's illusory, and it's not getting us anywhere. So during our time together tonight, we're going to talk about leadership in a different way. And to get there, we're going to forego safety. We're going to think differently about choice, and we're going to dig into difficult conversations. You guys ready? All right, let's do it. I'm 125 feet off the deck. And that crack, the thing I'd been using for all of my security, both for my hands and my feet and for my protection, was gone. And above me was this different color rock. Rock that I quickly realized was really soft. So soft that it kind of like fell down just from the strength of your gaze. And at that point I thought, this could go really poorly right now. And then, I hear this weird noise, kind of like if you're chewing on gravel. And I'm like, what is that? And I keep moving around, and I'm reaching and reaching and reaching, and I realize that that noise is the six-inch wide ledge that I'm standing on, eroding with every movement I'm making. And so I freeze, and I think, oh, God, it's only getting worse. I'm going to have to move. So I think to myself, I'm going to be as light as a daddy long leg spider. I'm going to be as elegant as a hummingbird, and I'm going to keep going. And I did, and I reached another crack, and finally another ledge in a position of security. I was so amazingly happy. I probably had the biggest smile on my face I've ever had in my life because not only had I made it through this position, but I realized we could climb this thing. I learned that stability is completely transitory. We can never stay in the same place forever. It doesn't matter if you're on that ledge in Ethiopia or if you're at some other place in your life. It's what we humans do. We make things as safe as we can, and then we move on. It's the beauty of being human. The trick is to learn how to be in both of those places, to be in the unsafe, and to know that the safe is around the corner, to be in the safe and know that it's not guaranteed and that the unsafe is coming, and then being able to play between those two environments. On rock and on ice, that's what we do. We learn to judge the gaps. We learn to do instant risk assessments to figure out just how large of a gap we can manage. Does it have to be small? Can it be big? Can it be massive? We live in a time that's more precarious than times past. It's what we hear on the news. It's what we hear out in the world. More precarious, less safe, too many options. So what do you all do to feel safe in this precarious time? When I arrived in Ethiopia, I understood 0.003% of the coffee world. I had, no, I, didn't, I had never thought about coffee. I didn't drink lattes. I mean, I just thought, well, this would be a cool story. But something in my gut, in my intuition, was pushing me to give it a try. And here's what happened. That first decision kept getting more and more interesting. That's how I recognize a good decision. Does it get more complex? Does it keep feeding your soul? Do you keep wanting to know more and more about it? There's all this talk about intuition right now. It's like, let's make snap judgments. Let's move fast. Let's be quick. But intuition, when you do it right, is for the long haul. I was not planning on going to that face. It was not our objective. I didn't think I was leading a team to climb a hill. I thought I was leading a team to climb a 3,000-foot crazy vertical rock face. We went on on that trip to do a first ascent of the Brandberg, the tallest peak in Namibia. That clip that I showed you at the beginning when I'm hyperventilating, that's from that climb. And it was amazing, first ascent, highest peak in Namibia. But what am I most proud of? That hill that we climbed. It's a thing that I didn't know what, that was there, but that my gut led me to, that my intuition brought me to. For some reason, when we go on an expedition, like to the Namibian desert, we expect unexpected things to happen. So we're almost prepared for it. Why is that? My goal is always to bring some of that back, to be open to those opportunities. That's going into the middle. It's going into the middle and playing with it. And if you keep learning, it means that we're doing something right. I don't just think this makes things more interesting. I think this makes us better global citizens. I think it's how we open ourselves up to new experiences. 
I, hope it, I think it's how we open ourselves up to new people. It's how we stretch as humans. It's how we stretch as a global society. To do this, however, to do any of it, we're going to have to take and tackle difficult conversations. Because we can't go in the middle, we can't be unsafe, we can't follow our intuition unless we're willing to get a little gritty with it. I lead trips all the time to places where there are more fatal snake bites than there are cures. Places where the adage goes that if you get bit, you take your affected elbow, nose, toe, and you put it in a bucket of milk. And you hold it there for five minutes, and you want to see if the venom stops. If that doesn't work, drink the milk. Fill the bucket with petrol. Soak that part of you that got bit in the petrol. Wait for five minutes. Still not working? Put the petrol in the truck and drive as fast as you can on that one bucket of gas and hope to God you make it the five days it takes you to get to the hospital. You can't make things safe when that's the environment that you're leading trips in. So you have to be honest. It's the only thing that we can do. But it's also where things get really fun. We don't need, as leaders, to provide answers. We need to create safe spaces for complexity. Lean in to that complexity. It's our global responsibility. It's definitely our opportunity. I want to close tonight by asking you all to move toward that complexity. So how are you going to do it? You're going to forgo safety, number one. You're going to follow intuition all the way through, no matter where it takes us, and have difficult conversations. The first thing, the safe thing, is always the hardest. But I will tell you that I am a total control freak. I plan, I pack, I research, I do everything I can. But I also know that I can't plan for everything. And that's where I love to be in the space when things are going to be unknown. Because that's where it gets exhilarating. That's how we dig into the richness of our life. And that's how we, as leaders, lead into the unknown, where you can kind of rub up against the edge in that loose tooth way, and you can say, oh, that hurts. It feels good. I want to spend some time here because it's interesting, and I'm learning. We live in a complex world. We're complex people. Let's embrace all of that. Thanks so much.